In this video, I'm going to talk about the concat map operator in RxJava and particularly on Android. So, uh, so just kind of heads up, I expect that you have watched my flat map video or my flat or at least read my flat map lecture before watching this one because the example I use is going to be exactly the same because flat map and concat map are, you know, they're mostly the same operator. The concat map just has a, a slight modification and that's what you're going to see in the example here. So if you haven't watched that, you haven't read that, watch my flat map operator video. It's really good. I think it does a good job of describing how the flat map operator works. So, uh, so now moving forward, I expect that everyone still watching this video now has seen that or has read that or has gone through that example, or you already know what the flat map does. That's fine too. And uh, now I'm going to tell you about the concat map. So in the flat map example that I do in the flat map video, uh, here's the example that, hap that I have. It's retrieving a list of, of uh, posts from a REST API, and it retrieves them in no particular order because that's what the flat map does. So notice that once the progress bar ends, that means it has retrieved that object uh, from the REST API, and eventually they kind of all trickle in. So, uh, so the, the key there is that uh, it order, order is not maintained there. All, the objects are emitted basically in a random order. So the concat map basically solves a problem that the flat map operator has. If you want to call it a problem, I just kind of think of it as a property. It's a property of the flat map operator. Um, it, it conserves order. So it's as simple as changing the flat map operation to concat map. That's all I'm going to do here for retrieving the comments. Once again, if you haven't watched the flat map video, this code is going to make no sense to you. So you have to go back and watch that. But uh, just kind of watch what that one change, that one little tiny change will do now to our application. So now watch these uh, comments as they're retrieved from the REST API. They're going to come in in order. So there's the first one. The next one is going to be the second one here. So they're coming in at random times. Uh, the key thing here is to notice that it's coming in in order. So if I scroll down to the bottom, none of these are being retrieved. They're all being retrieved in order. Now there's four, five, and it's going to continue on like that. So the, the key concept here is that order is maintained, uh, but kind of the thing that's lost is speed. Because basically what you're doing is you're trading uh, an operation that would have been done asynchronously across all of the, uh, up across all of the, the queries, basically, because these are just queries. Each one of these is uh, doing a query to get the comments. Uh, right here. So like this method is doing a query to get the comments for the posts instead of being executed asynchronously. So all at the same time, it's pretty, it's basically, it's not being executed synchronously, but it kind of is because they're all kind of going sequentially. They're one can't go until the previous one did. And that kind of goes all the way uh, back down to the very last entry. So um, it's not good. It's not bad. It's just kind of uh, what it's what it is. If this is the functionality that your app needs you need to make sure that the previous one was retrieved before the next one can go then the concat operator is what you want to use if you want everything to be retrieved all at once and then kind of emitted at whatever order then the flat map operator is what you want to use so it's kind of just whatever fits your application and um, so that's that's going to be it for the example and then in the next one now we're going to look at uh, another one of these operators, the switch map, which is also very similar to the concat map and the flat map. It basically does the same thing. The difference with this one is uh, it can it will only allow a single observer to exist at any given time. So if if one operation is in the middle of executing and then you try to execute another one, it will it will destroy the one that was previously executing and execute the next one. So it's a way to make sure that you kind of don't get stacking. Like if you were to send a request to a server, um, like a search query request, um, and, you, and the user changed their query before the first one completed, you'd want to use a switch map because you'd want to terminate that previous query. But we're going to take a look at that in the next video.